What's up everybody? My name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we are checking out the Corsair Scimitar RGB Elite. So this is retailing for $74.99 and it is 100% aimed at MMO players. But I do think there is some other great uses for this mouse too. And why you ask? Well, because this mouse has a number pad built into it. So aesthetics and design, there are some quite unique design choices here. And the first thing you notice is the fact that it's freaking huge. <laughs> So not only is it massive, but it has some serious curves here, and this has been purposefully sculpted into a contoured shape to fit your hand like a glove. Now, spoiler alert, it's incredibly comfortable. Now, on the right side of the mouse, there is a separate section made from tactile rubber for added grip and pinky support, and this grip works excellently, and it kind of acts like a bit of a seat belt. It ensures that you're locked in tight for the ride. The same can be said for the scroll wheel. Here we have possibly the most tactile design I've ever seen on a mouse before, and there's no chance that you're gonna slip off of this, and the resistance is actually really nice too. Another thing to point out is the fact that the wheel is almost suspended in min air between left and right buttons, and I think this looks great, and it really adds some style into the mouse. Now the entire main body is black and it has a soft touch matte rubber finish and this is split into two shells. So you've got the sort of upper section and the lower section. Now the finish to me feels excellent to touch and it also looks really premium as well. As this is a matte finish, you don't have to worry about fingerprints, but if you've got greasy or grubby hands, this will show over time. I think you'll end up with wear on these buttons unless you clean it regularly, but it's still much better than a full gloss finish. Speaking of gloss, well, we're not free of it here. The profile switching button and DPI button are both gloss. And if we take a look on the left-hand side, you can see the housing for the keypad has a gloss finish too. Now, luckily, these gloss areas aren't something you'll be in contact with often, so they should remain relatively clean, but I did find I kept getting some fingerprints on them. So if that's something that might bug you, then you know keep that in mind. Behind the keypad is a really nice brushed metal finish. Wait a second, there's a number pad? Yes, there is, and that's not all. This is a customizable number pad, and I don't just mean by reconfiguring it via software, the number pad can actually be physically moved to the best position for any user. Now this is a huge unique selling point here. My daily driver is a mouse by a company with green snakes on it that also has a keypad on it. And the one thing that's always annoyed me was that I wished that there was the choice of being able to move where they were, but those were built in. However, on the Scimitar Elite, you can precisely set the location and I love this. But how do you do this? Well, in the box, you get a short Allen key and just turn the mouse over. There's a small little Allen key bit there, loosen it, and now you can move the keypad back and forth until you get it right. And then you just gotta tighten it up, but make sure you just do it finger tight and don't wrench it really tight because you could risk breaking it or, you know, damaging the thread but it is very, very easy to do. The number keys themselves are split into four rows of three. So rows one and three are non-textured and a sort of a silver color, whereas rows two and four are gray with a textured finish. Now button number five has a little notch on it so that you can see or feel where you are at all times. Now all of these buttons are angled to fit around your thumb easily. Finally, there are four RGB zones. One is Corsair's ship sail logo on the back sort of lower of the mouse. The next is the scroll wheel, the keypad, and the little notch in front of it housing LEDs. And finally, there is also headlight on the front, but only on one side. Now, overall, I absolutely love this design. And in my opinion, it looks and feels top quality. I really enjoy the choices they've made in terms of you know, the material and the placement of all these materials. The keypad being able to be adjusted is the cherry on top here. So size-wise, it's 120 by 78 by 42 millimeters, and it's got a weight of 122 grams without the cable, so this is a hefty mouse, but I do quite like that. 
So it's got a braided 1.8 meter USB 2.0 cable, and at almost two meters, there's plenty of length to play around with. I had no issues with the cable getting caught, and it's pretty flexible as well. Now out of the box, it does come kinked, as all cables do, but these did fall out over time. One thing to note is that the cable comes out from the left click button since the scroll wheel is floating in midair in the middle. So what's underneath? Now this really confused me and it still does. The first thing I noticed was, well, uh, there's nothing there. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that? Well, there's no information whatsoever. There's not even the mouse's name. There's no serial number. There's no product number, safety compliance, or anything whatsoever. And I've never seen this on a mouse before. But aesthetically, this looks so much better. It makes for a much cleaner design but I would have liked to seen the Scimitar RGB Elite text etched into the base somewhere just to top it off. And so you know what the mouse is called. If you've had it for a few years, you might have forgotten, you know, so that's one thing to note. There are four fairly small PTFE glide pads here, and considering the sheer size of this mouse, I expected these to be larger, but in use, it doesn't really affect the performance, and it glided excellently on my mouse mat. Now the sensor is surrounded by a brushed metal plate, and this accents the same metal found behind the movable keypad. On the left hand side there is a parallel plastic design that wraps around the front of the mouse to house that little headlight that we spoke about earlier. Finally we have the allen key slot for the keyboard adjuster again which we told you about earlier. So build quality, well there's absolutely no rattle here whatsoever and nothing feels loose either which is great to see since there are moving parts. So you know well done Corsair. Everything feels really secure. There's no sharp edges at all. And from me, this gets top marks. Grip style. So due to the design of this mouse, it's definitely made for palm grip. And palm grip is insanely comfortable. It's like cruising in a Bentley. It's that level of comfort. And it's excellent as MMO players usually play games for a long time per session. So you need that super ergonomic comfort that the Scimitar Elite has to offer. Claw grip is just as comfortable and I'd say it's easily usable for long periods of time too, but fingertip grip on the other hand doesn't really work too well because the size of the mouse, you have to grip it quite tightly and your thumb risks accidentally clicking that keypad. But not only that, you'll have to stop moving your hand entirely to be able to choose what button you want to choose and click on that keypad as well. Can you guess how many buttons there are on this mouse? Well, I'll give you a little second to think about that. You've had your second. There are 17 programmable buttons. Can you believe that? <laughs> There's 12 on the keypad. You've got the left and right buttons, the profile switch, and DPI buttons, as well as the scroll wheel click. Now, all are really nice and clicky, but I would say the scroll wheel takes a bit more pressure to engage than I would have liked to see or even expected, but this may improve over use. Now the left and right buttons do have Omron switches and these have 50 million click lifespan. The Scimitar Elite has three onboard profiles for hardware playback, including macros and lighting effects. These three profiles have five different DPI stages too. So changing profiles changes the RGB color between red, green, and blue to let you know which profile you're using. And the DPI stages also change RGB color to let you know which stage you're on. So these are red, white, green, purple, or blue, but you do have to you know, remember which ones are which. Now, I do love this feature as it's really easy to acknowledge what settings you're using. The keypad's default settings across all profiles are as they appear. So this is from one all the way up to the minus key. So sensor-wise, we've got a custom optical PixArt PMW3391 sensor. And this is a DPI range of 100 to 18,000. I still have yet to meet anyone that plays at that higher DPI, but you know, there could be some people. Let us know down in the comments if that's you. So you've got five DPI stages, and these are programmed as default to 800, 1500, 3000, 6000, and 9000 but they do change depending on the profile. 
We've got 50 G acceleration, a polling rate of up to 1000, which we all know is excellent for gaming because it transmits the signal quicker to the computer. So let's check out some performance. So I tested this mouse on Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout 76, which I haven't played in some time, but I managed to jump right back into it with the help of the Scimitar Elite. Movements were super accurate, and I never felt that it was lagging behind or, you know, lacking with what I was asking it to do. All buttons worked flawlessly with inputs instantly triggering my abilities when I was asking it. So as with all MMOs, I got lost in time and quickly realized I've been playing for far longer than I intended. But due to the crazy ergonomics and comfort that this design you know, offers, I didn't even realize and I experienced no hand aches or fatigue that I usually find using other mice for that period of time. Overall, it performed exactly how it should have and that is a win from me. Earlier I said that this mouse could benefit others and I do stand by that. I think this is a great choice for editors or anyone using certain software regularly because you could key bind certain actions and macros to the number pad and this would increase productivity and workflow potentially as long as you're not slacking off playing games. So software wise, make sure to download the latest version of IQ from Corsair's website. Once open, head to settings and then device settings and check for updates. From here, go to the home tab and select the Scimitar RGB Elite. On the left hand side, we have five separate tabs. The first is actions, and this lets you assign an array of options to the buttons from macros, application launches, different text, media, key remapping. They're, they're, honestly guys, there's so much, you'll have to get dug into this really. But this is where you'll spend the majority of your time tweaking and changing settings. The best bit is that it's easy to navigate with added visual aids and you know, there's so many choices to make. Now you can make new profiles and start from scratch, or you can adjust the already, you know, designed profiles, which kind of are already done. So you could use this as a starting point if you don't know, you know, where to start with a custom profile. Next is the lighting effects, and this lets you customize to your heart's content the various effects across all the RGB zones. And better yet, if you've got other compatible products from Corsair, you can use Lighting Link to sync these effects. Now I'm boring and I usually stick to just color cycle, but you can really get stuck in here. The next tab is for DPI and here you can change your preferences for all three profiles. This lets you change how many DPI stages you want, their speeds, the X and Y axis, and so much more too, as well as the color representation. The performance tab lets you adjust angle snapping, lift height and pointer speed, so there's you know, quite a simple section here really. And finally, we have surface calibration and this couldn't be any easier to use. There's a little surface with a dot on it that you grab with your cursor and then you draw spirals around. But the best bit, and this might just be me, but there's a little speedo that you have to keep in the green zone to properly calibrate. Now this is super easy, but I actually found it really fun as well. And I wanted to calibrate it for a second time which I did, of course. Overall, the software works great, and this is really the heart of the potential that the Scimitar Elite has to offer. If you get stuck in and dedicate some serious time to your configuration, you can make this mouse work wonders for you. So in conclusion, well, I've been playing MMOs since 2004, yeah, I'm getting old, and have sank well over 10,000 hours each into multiple different titles you know, the confessions. But my biggest frustration is the fact that in the early days was trying to move, click, reach the number keys all at the same time whilst, you know, fast paced PVPing or PVEing. And this was really frustrating. Now mice with number pads literally changed my life when they appeared and I've been using various models as my daily drivers for like so many years now. But the Scimitar Elite is certainly holding the crown for me. The comfort of this mouse it's just ridiculous. It feels like they took a mold of my hand whilst I was sleeping and crafted the best design for me. So, I mean, they might have. I do lock my windows though. Not only that, but it performs great and I experience no hiccups whatsoever. Partnered with the IQ software and the ability to use it in other situations like video editing, which I do myself, it gets a huge thumbs up from me for what you get as a whole, and I do think it's worth that $74.99 price tag. It is pricey, but you're getting a hell of a lot of mouse here for that. 
So just to really quickly go through the pros, possibly the most comfortable mouse ever. Adjustable number pad is excellent. Multiple uses, gaming and productivity, works flawlessly. Blacked out matte design looks really, really nice. The build quality is top notch. The software, you know, is just great. Now cons, fingertip grip isn't great. You could make it work, but it's not really designed for that. Over time, that rubber finish could wear on the left and right clicks and there's no information whatsoever on the base at all. So it would have been nice to see, you know, a, a little bit of information, even just the, the name of the mouse. But, you know, am I being too picky? Let me know down in the comments. And also let us know if you're going to be picking up the Scimitar RGB Elite from Corsair. So if you've enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe and ring the bell. Check out our merchandise, which you can see down below, and check out our website daily for tech news. So I've been Andy, this is Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one. So thank you for watching, guys.